Previously, in the CNS Pharmacology Masterclass, we talked about the anti-epileptic drugs classification, and we mentioned that the anti-epileptics are classified into the first generation anti-epileptics, which are also called the classic anti-epileptics or the older anti-epileptics. And we also have the second generation anti-epileptic drugs, which are also called the newer anti-epileptics. Now the carbamazepine, which is our topic of today, is included in the first generation of the anti-epileptics. And other examples of the first generation anti-epileptics include the phenytoin, which we already explained, the valproic acid, the ethosuximide, the phenobarbital, and the benzodiazepines. Examples of the second generation anti-epileptics include the vigabetrine, the lamotrigine, the topiramate, the levetiracetam, the gabapentin and pregabaline, and the tigabine. So let's start our talk about the carbamazepine with an overview. So a famous trade name for this medication is the Tegretol and this is how the packaging look for this medication and the carbamazepine is one of the most commonly used anti-epileptic drugs for treatment of seizures and epilepsy and it was discovered in 1953 by the Swiss chemist Walter Scheindler. Now let's move on to talk about the mechanism of action of this medication. So we mentioned that it is used in treatment of seizures, that is by blocking the voltage-gated sodium channels in the brain. Now, if you remember, when we want to treat a seizure, we either have to block the sodium channels or we have to enhance the inhibitory neurotransmitters in the form of GABA, or we have to block the excitatory neurotransmitters. And the carbamazepine works by blocking the sodium channels. And this is the same mechanism as the phenytoin, except the phenytoin blocks the sodium channels in the brain and the heart, while the carbamazepine blocks them in the brain only. So when it blocks the voltage-gated sodium channels, it leads to inhibition of the generation of repetitive action potentials that lead to seizure, and this would lead to stopping or prevention of the seizure. Now let's talk about the therapeutic uses of the carbamazepine. So, as we mentioned earlier, it is used in treatment of seizures, and specifically, it is used in treatment of focal onset seizures of most types. And also, it is used in treatment of generalized onset tonic-clonic seizures. Carbamazepine can exacerbate the absence and myoclonic seizures. That is why it is not given for patients suffering from those types of seizures. And it is effective in treatment of trigeminal and glossopharyngeal neuralgia. And it is also used as a mood stabilizer in treatment of bipolar disorder. Now, all of the already mentioned therapeutic uses are FDA approved. The non-FDA approved ones include the refractory schizophrenia, that is when we tried all the lines of treatment of schizophrenia and no one worked, then we tried the carbamazepine, and there is evidence that it improves both the positive and negative symptoms in schizophrenia, and is also used off-label in treatment of neuropathic pain and fibromyalgia. Now let's talk about the adverse effects of the carbamazepine. So it may lead to mild gastrointestinal discomfort and it may lead to mild maculopapular rash and it is allergic in nature. That is why if this rash appeared, then drug should be stopped because the next progression for this rash is the Steven Johnson syndrome, which is rare and the Asians are more susceptible to the Steven Johnson syndrome due to the prevalence of the HLA-B1502 
allele in Asians. And this allele is highly associated with the Steven Johnson syndrome. So it is very important that if the patient is Asian, we have to test for the allele, the HLA B1502 allele. So if they have it, then we don't give them the drug because of the high risk for the Steven Johnson syndrome. And this picture here is an example of the maculopapular rash. Carbamazepine also affects the central nervous system, leading to several adverse effects like diplopia, which is double vision, meaning the person sees two objects of the same object, like this here. And this occur firstly in comparison with the other CNS symptoms caused by this medication. So the first CNS symptom is the diplopia if the patient would have CNS symptoms associated with their carbamazepine use. Carbamazepine may also lead to nystagmus, which is uncontrollable movements of the eye, as we can see in this example. And it also may lead to ataxia. Ataxia is a problem of coordination. This may lead to abnormalities in coordinating the lower limbs movements leading to abnormal walking or difficulty coordinating the upper limbs movements or difficulty coordinating the speech or the eye movements. Now the CNS symptoms caused by the carbamazepine are also shared by most of the first generation anti-epileptics. And carbamazepine also affects the liver leading to microsomal enzyme induction which we will talk about a little bit later. And it affects the blood leading to megaloblastic anemia due to the increased folic acid metabolism caused by the CYP450 enzymes induction. And it also lead to benign leukopenia, which is a drop in the white blood cell count. And rarely the white blood cell count become very low, leading to a granulocytosis and aplastic anemia. And that is why with the use of this medication, the baseline complete blood count is recommended. To check if the patient have low white blood cell count, then we don't give them this medication. Carbamazepine, if given during a pregnancy, it is teratogenic. It may lead to neural tube defects like spina bifida, which is incomplete closing of the spinal cord, leading to the spinal cord popping out into the outside environment, like you can see in this picture here. And it also may lead to craniofacial anomalies in the baby, for example, the cleft palate that you can see here in this picture. And risk for teratogenic anomalies is lower for this medication in comparison with the phenytoin or valproic acid, because those medications cause more teratogenic effects. And carbamazepine also lead to increase antidiuretic hormone secretion, leading to hyponatremia and edema. Now let's move on to talk about the pharmacokinetics of this medication. So the carbamazepine is available in oral and intravenous formulations, and the oral formula is well absorbed with almost 100% bioavailability. And the distribution is slow. The volume of distribution is around one liter per kilogram. So if we have toxicity, we can clear the medication through dialysis because the volume of distribution is less than 10. And the plasma protein binding for this medication is 70%. Regarding metabolism, the carbamazepine is metabolized by the cytochrome B450 enzymes in the liver, mainly by the cytochrome B3A4. And the carbamazepine is a CYP enzyme inducer. As we mentioned earlier, it specifically induces the CYP3A4 and the CYP2B6. And this leads to increase the rate of metabolism of other anti-epileptic drugs and other drugs that are metabolized by these enzymes. Examples of the other anti-epileptics 
that would be affected by the carbamazepine include the primidone, the phenytoin, the ethosuximide, the valproic acid, and the clonazepam. And the carbamazepine, interestingly enough, induces its own metabolism, which is auto-induction, resulting in lower blood concentrations of this medication at higher doses. And its half-life is around 36 hours, and it is excreted through urine. Now let's talk about the contraindications. So carbamazepine is contraindicated in bone marrow suppression because it leads to leukopenia, and it is contraindicated in hypersensitivity to it or to tricyclic antidepressants, for example, the amitriptyline, because the carbamazepine has a similar chemical structure to the tricyclic antidepressants. So if the patient is allergic to the tricyclic antidepressants, they are also allergic to the carbamazepine. So it is important to not give them this medication if they have allergy to the tricyclic antidepressants. Finally, let's talk about the carbamazepine toxicity. So doses higher than 24 grams ingested by adult patient are fatal. Toxicity appears after two hours of intake and is present as impaired consciousness, which progresses to coma. Patients also have tremor, acetoid movements, dizziness, midriasis, and nystagmus. And with higher doses, the cardiac symptoms appear in form of ECG changes, tachycardia, and shock. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Support this video by giving it a like and commenting your ideas and questions. And this video is a part of a bigger class. It's called the CNS Pharmacology Masterclass. You can check it out. It will appear on your monitor right now.